Okay, we're going to look through how this kit fits onto the Weber and what it actually does to enhance the performance. So firstly, you take a brand new or used Weber and you need to dismantle it by taking off all the little nuts, the spring washers and the little clamps, yeah. which we'll do now. And these are metric, aren't they? They are a six millimeter thread, which is a 10 millimeter AF spanner size. Um, takes quite a long while to get all these off. And then the ram pipe pokes into, there's a small kind of sleeve inside the Weber. What you'll find is on the back of the Weber ram pipe, which we will get off in a minute. Would you advise to do this away from the car rather than? Yeah, you don't really want to be, you could do it on the car quite easily, but. It's, it's a bit fiddly. Like this. Yeah, especially if it's on a mini, so it goes up right up and under the scuttle panel. That's right. It's really tight. This is far easier to do while it's on the bench, as you will well see. Normally you'd use a spanner, but I've already loosened these off for Steve, just for the sake of the video. It's made life easy for me for a change. Yeah, I do try. So um, they're going to be quite tight, spanner tight. Just be really so, careful, they're not 3.8 on these new ones. They are so 10 mil. What we do is then... We'll need to get the little studs out. Stephen's again already loosened these off for me, so they do come out quite easily. You could use a stud extractor, but it will mark up the studs, won't it? If you ever want to put them back on again, probably okay. best. So we've now got together. studs out, nuts off, and the run pipes out. What you'll notice with these, they've got a section here that actually locates into the Weber. So as you take them out, that's the location. Yeah. Now, what we have on our kit. We'll put these back here out of the way now. Over there. Do over those. Okay. This is a replacement section for the back of that ram pipe. So basically from there to there is that piece. Got it. Okay. If you don't put those in, the choke tubes and the venturis can rattle down. So drop that in. That drops into there. Okay. Drop the other one in the other side in there. Then you'll need the base plate. This is the base plate that the actual ITG filter clips on around the bottom yeah. and then it's held in there and there by two Zeus fasteners. So be sure you get it on the right way around. If you put it on that way around, the breather won't work. Is that fuel overflow? What's that for? It's a breather to go into the um, flow bowl. So as the, flow, as the fuel level rises, it can actually dispel the air. Okay. Okay, that don't, one drops over the top. Don't block that off. Still got your hole. Yeah. Okay, now, if we take these, these are the air, the air horns, and these are the stub stacks. What you'll find is one's got a cutout. Yep. The cutout is basically, so that when it's bolted on there, the air can still go in, around, and down to the hole. There's also a little recess there that locates on that. So we're absolutely dead Snug. right. Snug. And there's a flat on there as well, so that yep, should that's identify. So that both of them can run as close as possible to each other. Yeah. Okay. Can you run it just like that? I know we do a stub we, stack. We do kit. do a stub stack kit. You could actually run these just like that if you've got the right size screws to hold them down. Yeah. Or the stub stacks we have, slightly smaller diameter than that, but they will still do the same job. Okay. Little aluminium posts going like so. Yeah. And then you've got the rams that go on the top. Now, what these actually do is force the air down over the venturi, which then helps pick the mixture up and disperse the mixture quicker. You still get enough air through here to feed the carburetor, but it just enhances everything, how it mixes. That's why these work so well. So, Presumably, you'd have to change all the jetting then to make these work. Really does need rejetting. It won't be far out, but these do work and they do need rejetting yeah. just to finalise them. Then, what you've got is you've got four little screws that go through the ramp pipe, through the post, through the stub stack, through the base plate, and, and they literally screw down back into the Weber carburetor itself. And they're metric as well. These are M6. So you're going to need a... head screws. We put button heads in because they've got a little bit of a radius on to help the airflow. Yeah. Obviously, as well as what you can. So you're going to need a 
An Allen key or a socket? Socket with an Allen key is what we use. I'll just shortcut it here. I'll just spin them in with this yeah. on the end of my finger. The thing you do have to be careful of is just Not when you're tightening them over tighten these. As you see, if you over tighten it, it kicks it up. Yeah. So pull it down to there, pull this one down. Put that in place. The other thing I was going to say is make sure they're centralised as well because centralise it all. They, there is a little bit of wiggle room there. Now, what I would suggest is when you put these in, little dab of Loctite on the bottom of the screw. Okay. Because they because vibrate around a lot. They do vibrate. And if you get one of these to come off, there's only one place it's going to go. That's straight down into the inlet port and wreck the motor. So, so don't do that. There you go. That's it in situ now. So you've got your stub stacks. You've got your amp pipe and you've got your internal sleeve to locate everything. This is the base plate. All that happens now is the little rib on the bottom clips in place underneath there. The top section then drops down over the two Zeus fastener springs and you literally turn those to lock it in place. So yeah. literally. You'll bump, find bump, bump. once it's been on and off a few times, it just it does get oh, it easier. easier. I'm yeah. not going to try and force it on now because it is quite tight the first time around. But what happens is that just clips under there. Yeah. Like that. Can there you, you please on. take that off again and show us inside the filter? Because this is one of the things about these ITG filters that we like so much, is that it has no back. So it's just plastic on there. So that's it. The whole thing is foam. The beauty of these over some other filters, some filters have got a tin plate over here. And obviously, as the carburetor's sucking, it can't suck from the back of the filter. So it's actually sucking at 90 degrees before it's even into the carb. This can suck straight in here, straight in here, 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 anywhere on the filter, because it is foam all around. And if it's on a race car, can you run that without the filter? A lot of people now are running mini race engines without filters. You've got to keep on top of it because obviously you get a bit of dirt or grit go through, gets under the valve seat, you've got a little mark in the valve seat, before you know it, you've got a hot spot, then you've got a crack, and you've got a scrap cylinder head. Okay. Also, the dirt and dust does go down into the bore and it will scratch and damage piston rings and bore. So, just be careful. If you run it on the road, then this is a must. On the racetrack, then, well... It's up to you. Take your choice. Um, all available on the website. You can buy these individually if you're running with an S-Class or a Mini 7. Yeah. So if you want to buy just the aluminium parts, we can supply the aluminium parts for either one carb, a pair of carbs, or just one of the choke yeah. assemblies. There you go. Thanks, Steve.